Okay, so today I'm here with Nancy. Today we're gonna work on your forehand, right? Right. All right, so what about your forehand specifically? Do you like, not like, or what do you, uh, what do you wanna be doing better on it? Or what do you, I don't know, why don't, why, what could, what could make you happier with your forehand to be able to do? Sometimes it seems like I'm doing the exact same thing. Sometimes it's a good shot and sometimes it's not, and I don't know the difference. Ah, that's good, that's good. If so I, inconsistency, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. The problem is that I don't know the difference. Sure when I could tell what I've done wrong, you know, like, oh, I wasn't holding it uh, firm enough and the racket twisted, I could tell that. But sure, got it, I got it. I can't tell, that's a little frustrating. Yeah, I yeah. know, I think that's that's one of the most frustrating things about tennis is when you miss, you don't know, and you don't know why you miss. Yeah. Because if you know why you miss, you can fix it. But if you don't know why you miss, it just becomes frustrating. Yeah. But I think one thing that's gonna help you is the video. You'll be able to see yourself okay. on the video, and then you'll kind of have a better idea of what's happening when okay. you're doing it, because yeah. when you don't, see yourself you can't really feel your body you have no kinesis over your limbs yeah. so being able to see yourself and what's going on in the hit is going to make a big difference for you okay yeah. now i've certainly spent some time around watching at our cardio classes and stuff and haven't had the opportunity to get you individually but now that i do i definitely have in mind something that i would like to see you do on your forehand it's going to be a little bit of a change but i think with some repetition you can do it um but i'll show you now okay you ready yes i'm ready all right Okay, so Nancy, you'll see your kind of low take back here on your forehand. Start in your ready position, and then it goes straight from your ready position down to what is a very important position, the doggy padding or low and closed position, which we do want to see you get in. But as you'll see, typically people that do that initially end up coming back up, as you can see here, too high, and then end up coming straight into the ball anyway, which is the most common error in tennis which makes you have to scoop the ball a little there at contact. Um, so sometimes you take it back low and you keep it low. And if you kept it there and you went straight to the ball from there, you'd be okay. But you'll see pretty consistently you come up too high again, coming straight into the ball. Um, and then the ball won't go over the net unless your racket head scoops like that. So that, to me, that's your primary inefficiency is taking the racket back low on your forehand. So we're gonna to try to get it to where you take it back high and you have more options, you get more power, keeps the racket and body in sync, allows the skies um, of the drop shot. But uh, let's, let's talk about it on court a little bit. Okay, so Nancy, I think you have a really common swing pattern that we see a lot. Right. In fact, it's still taught by coaches a lot is that you take your racket straight back low, okay? Now I'll even teach this to a few beginners um, when they first start, because this is such, such an important position to get into, which is in the low and close position. But a few things happen when you take it straight back there. Um, first of all, we see professional players and good, high, very high level tennis players, they all prepare with their racket high. Now, I don't necessarily think you have to do things because pros do them. In fact, I think, um, I think a lot of pros don't volley efficiently or effectively. So just because a pro does it doesn't mean we have to do it. But I think when almost every single professional tennis player and high level player prepares with their racket high, we might want to look at that and see why. Okay, so a few things happen when you prepare high. The biggest thing of which is you get free power. You'll feel kind of like a Ferris wheel or a swing set, the downswing will kind of make the upswing. So you get that free power from the drop of the racket. Um, yeah, but there's other benefits, like if you wanted to disguise a drop shot, if you didn't want them to know a drop shot was coming, or say you got moonballed and you wanted to come and take it out of the air. You can do all of that with a unit turn high. If you just do this, you're kind of stuck to topspin. Yeah, and, and then the other thing with taking it back low, and you're gonna see on your video, Nancy, um, or you saw on the analysis, when you're low, Almost everyone that takes their racket back low ends up coming back high and then they don't get low enough. Yeah, because you want that extra power to hit the ball with. But when you take it back high, you get that extra power. Now, um, if you only did one, because I know in the past I've talked to you about taking your racket back high and you've struggled with it because you take it back high and you try to go straight into the ball. Um, I would rather you take it back low then go high and straight in. So if you only did one, yeah, you'd want to go low and try to keep it low, and then that would be great. But I think, you know, you're such a talented lady, and I'd really like to see, I think the little things are gonna make a big difference in your tennis game, and just being able to hit the ball better, preparing high, 
but still letting it drop way into that low and closed position is really going to help, okay? Here, so stand behind me here and let's do that together again. Ready position? Turn with your racket high, a little further back. Yeah? No, I need to get it Yeah, turn your body a little more. There you go, good. And then let the downswing make the upswing. Good. Again, and just feel like kind of a swing set. You'll feel that drop. That looks great. That looks great. It's going to be a little of a change. It's going to take some repetition, but I think you can do it. High, low, high. Here's, here's my favorite drill to teach people to take their racket back high. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to put the, this tube kind of, at your, kind of in front of you at your hip here, and you're going to start in your ready position. Yeah. And when you prepare with your racket, you're going to take it back over the tube. Yeah, prepare high. And then you're going to swing under it. Good. Now see that scoop. Don't scoop there. Okay. It's got to drop to, that's what you do so well when you take it back low. So you got to make sure it goes closed and then up. Come up like yeah. This. So it would be something like this. Yep. There you go. That's it. Wow, that looks awesome. Turn high and swing low. Good. All right. Now I'm going to drop the ball out here and you just got to swing under the tube when you hit it, okay? okay. So turn high, what? go ahead and turn, and then swing low. Nice, beautiful. Let's do it again, ready? Turn high, swing low. Nice. And you got getting a lot of good true topspin on that ball. That was good pure top. Um, now you hit topspin anyway. When you do the right thing, when you take it low and you keep it low, it and works. you the, resist the urge to come back up, you do do this but it's just going to be a lot more consistently, it's going to be more consistently like that, and you're going to get a lot more free power. So it looks great, keep, keep it up, let's get some repetition. Okay, so turn high. That's all right. Try again, turn high. Nice, good top spin on that. Thank you.